way down the chain, all the way down till the end, stand next to each other. Hey, lady! <laughs> 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 She wants me. Oh you hear that? Still oh a rock star. 44 years old. Still rocking. <laughs> I like the enthusiasm, though. I do. <laughs> Welcome to Foggy Scotland. <laughs> I know. It freaked you out. Germany's like, yeah. I do something called contortion. I move my body around in very disgusting ways. Some of you are going to be offended. Sorry. I didn't mean to make eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you are going to take the video. <laughs> hey, mister, check it out! Green D's. <laughs> Germany, the word of the day is gentle. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in tradition of a straight jacket escape, which is normally time, I'd like everybody here to help me out with a massive countdown. 99! <laughs> I did that joke in Austria, and they all went 98. <laughs> Well, to start it all off, <laughs> I may as well start from the beginning. My name is Todd Angel Various, and I was born in Buffalo, two years in Austin, Texas. Sounds like I did prison time. I, had, I grew up from uh, birth, uh, no, from two to four in Austin, Texas, and then most of the rest of my life in a white suburb called Flat Rock, which is just south of Detroit. In 2004, I moved from Cleveland, Ohio to Fort Myers Beach, Florida, where I met a guy named Gazzo, G-A-Z-Z-O, look him up on the internet. And he was a guy that taught me magic and how to street perform. And since then, I did two, a couple of years doing uh, the old cups and balls trick, and then I started doing the straight jacket. 10 years later, I got tired of the straight jacket, got into a cowboy action, and then I started doing this Western art show on the street, which made absolutely no money, but made me happy. So I went back to some old advice that a very old performer called Silver said to me. He's like, do the show that pays for the show you want to do. So I would do a straight jacket show that makes the money, because it's all hype and money making. And then I would do a cowboy show. And that kind of created a guy named Duke Lupin, which is one of the performances that I do in a circus. But now I'm back on the straight jacket because I found a new way to connect with people, which is through my heart. It hasn't always been through my heart. It was used to be through my wallet and my vanity. Uh, I just decided to not be angry anymore and to take the word no out of my show. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to one guy that speaks French and he makes it beautiful. <laughs> How I got the idea to put in a little bit of a world, world, world speech, world love, you know, all one human nation. And I never wrote that. This woman came up to me at the end of my show and said, that was amazing. And I says, well, what are you talking about? She goes, you didn't see it? And then she said the words, you just put a hundred different people in a public place from different cultures, countries, and beliefs and for about an hour, nobody really cared who they stood next to. They were too busy uh, having a good time, just like as one human nation. Like everybody was just human at that point. They, they let go of their, their borders and their boundaries and their skin color and their ethnic uh, background. They were just laughing. And that just, a lot, I get a lot of people saying a lot of things to me at the end of my shows, <laughs> mostly positive. And, um, but that, that one woman, man, that's, yeah, I made it into the show. A lot of things make it into the show, like um, the, uh, the tube of toothpaste joke that I did the other day. <laughs> I feel like the first part of the toothpaste in a new tube. <laughs> Somebody read the directions and squeeze me from the bottom. My daughter pointed that out the other night. I didn't even write that. My eight-year-old kid wrote that joke. <laughs> right. It's at this point, I always ask a beautiful human 
to put the chain on my neck. A beautiful human to... Yeah, I am talking to you, yeah. She's holding the phone and she's too nervous. It's you. Stop! Gentlemen, face up the street with your bodies. Put the chain over your shoulder. And take me to the gay bar. I am ready. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, we are gathered here today. <laughs> now Canada's not looking anywhere near you. <laughs> Some people ask me why Edinburgh, and it's well, if you've tasted a lot of things off of the tray, like a meat platter or sorry beans, or like a veggie platter or whatever, you'll find that one thing that you keep going back to, yeah. And that it agrees with your body. And then you start going back to that pub or that restaurant and you keep ordering that one thing. Well, to me, once I became an entertainer, more or less a street performer, but I like to call myself an entertainer because it's branched off from there. But in the beginning, when I was strictly a street scum, street performer, because um, that's what I called myself, I tasted everything. I went everywhere. I've been all the way to the Balkan Mountains. I've been through Romania, Albania, Macedonia, Yugos, the former Yugoslavia, Split, man, I've got everywhere, France, Spain, Germany, Poland, I've been everywhere. And every time I come back to Scotland, and when I came to Scotland, they all thought I was funny. They all kind of understood and agreed with the jokes. And they gave me the British pound, which back then was two to one to the American dollar. So no matter how bad I was doing in British pounds, I was killing it compared to how I was getting paid in America. I'm 44 years old, and in 20 years from now, my body's not gonna work the same. It might, it might. My dad was dead at 53, right? And he had uh, diabetes uh, from drink, and I don't drink. Um, <laughs> which is funny, because I'm in a bar every day. Aren't I, honey? <laughs> That's Mrs. McGregor of the Royal McGregor, which has given us a lovely place. I think that my mouth is always gonna work, and I'm always gonna be funny. So what I've decided to do is focus on the people that led me this far already. Izzard, Carlin, Billy, Robin. What did they do? They kept being funny. So why not? Get funny, go on stage, keep writing, and if I'm happy when I die, it was all worth it. And if I wasn't happy when I die, you know, I made a mistake somewhere. But I'm human. What can you do? Well, I'm out of coffee. <laughs> and credits. <laughs>